Hey, what's up, beautiful Billcast listeners? Welcome to another episode. I am Gio. And I'm Bart. Cheers. Hey, um, there is no good way for me to wear a flannel and not look like a chola. Really? Yeah. Is it just because or you're... maybe it's just in my head. <laughs> it might just be in your head. It looks great. And Does that it really? doesn't look anything like um like the Mexican cholo pattern. Because that was a specific really? one, yeah. Okay, what does a specific one look like? Um, there's a... I don't know. There's Is it like browns and blues? No, there's a specific, like cholo look like a swatch like swatches yeah like cholo plaid just specific cholo plaid is it black and white no it's not the color base too because i've seen cholos with like brown ones and i don't know what it is but like all the cholos out there let me know but there's (laughs) like there's a certain plaid that you look and oh that looks hard and then there's certain one you're like okay that looks hipster or or you look okay that looks farmer like there's a certain like cholo plaid. Okay, I'm gonna and, look it up. And for some reason, oh, this one. Yeah, like that. Like like that looks hard. That looks hard. Right. Like some of them. Some of them look hard. Like Dude, that. Oh all yeah, yeah, like of that. These. Like that. See, even that polo shirt looks hard. Oh my god. Right. Okay, that's not. Yeah, exactly. It's that weird. Is. Right. Yeah. Like that's not even plaid, but that's Dude, like stripes. Dude, you're so observant, man. There's a cholo plaid print. There and is. Then there's some people that if they don't have the eye. Like, you know, when people dress up for like cholos or cholas for Halloween. Yeah. And they pick like, I don't know, something they got from H&M and it doesn't look hard at all. And you fucked it up. <laughs> you should be a cholo uh, consultant. Cholo fashion. Yeah, yeah fashion cholo fashion, fashion consultant. Wait, but I feel like in the 80s it was used more. I'm trying to look it up. I don't even know how I got There's here. There's an but- escalation of cholality. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> there really is. <laughs> what? Cholality? Yeah, there's really, there really is. What's elity part? What does that mean? Like you know, the, like the ology? study, the study of it, or cholology, maybe. Cholology. There we go. You fucked up. There's it's a cholology. very so like, um, maybe because <laughs> I am observant, but like, so. But I feel like in the '80s they already had this shit. No. Oh, even way before that. The '70s. I think it started with the zoot suit era. I think you're right. Because you know how like, the fuck you know more about my like shit the high waisted pants, right, and the slacks. What a disaster! And then when slacks started going out of style, then they have work pants, so dicky. So how do we still keep that look? You got to start and crease them. So you got the really nice creases, right? Well, because if you even if you even think of the zoot suits, right, they were like bigger on top, and mm-hmm. then they tapered at yep, the bottom. Yep, and so they were like the bag- baggy. So you can see why it's still buttoned at the top, uh, right? Came from the zoot suit era. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about. What sixties. Like, uh, no, 30s? before that, yeah. Like oh, World War II oh. era. Okay. Yeah. Damn, dual. Okay, well, yeah, no, it doesn't look like it at all anymore. Yeah. No, it really does. Throw on some hoops. Hey, like the, the, the chola. The more, um, the more cholo you need to prove, the more to the books it has to be. Mm. So, for example, if if you're starting out cholo in the whole like cholology like progression, <laughs> You have to have your high socks has to be covered by your long shorts. Absolutely. No it has knee- to overlap. Yeah. No knees showing, right? And, and those the- socks have to be fucking white. white. White, 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 white. And you can't move away from Cortez's, Air and those Force have to be clean as fuck. Or Chuck's, right? You can't move away from any of those. Dude, whoever invented the Cholology look yeah. probably had OCD. Because keep Probably. describing what you're about yeah. to say. And then, so if you're a new cholo, you have to nail it or else people are going to question your authority. Right. But what I've noticed is the veteranos, like the guys that are like, they've been the around OGs, the block. The OGs, the original gangsters. Yeah, and you can, you're just like, and they have faded tattoos on the head. You're like, okay, this guy's been around a long time. Those are not fresh tattoos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He got them during a period of time. He has he to have was, a scar on his face Yeah, where's a bad mofo. You'll notice those guys. Their socks are a little bit lower now, and they earn it. Their socks might only no, go their up socks low. never go lower. No, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Sometimes oh, they're like mid calf. Right. Sometimes they're mid calf, and you're they can right. show some knee now or yeah. show some upper shin. Yeah, because they fucking kill people. But yeah, because then they're like, oh fuck, like they don't have to go all the way that high, and I know how badass you are. And you'll notice their shoes; they might have ventured out a little bit. Not always Chucks or Air Force Ones. Sometimes Case they Swiss? get. They, uh, well, even case was is still cholo. Okay. Um, but they might get like the Nike dad shoes. <laughs> you know, they might have <laughs> some of those. Now, dude. Yeah, but they might, but they'll be all white still. They'll still be fucking clean and fresh, like New Balance. Yeah, or they might get like some of the more like them, or they might get Air for uh New Balance. Yeah, not Air New Balances or even like uh, Air Maxes, but it's all white or all black. 
So they've earned it. You know, they, they don't have to hit that. And they're probably sick and tired of it. I've worn it for 20 years. You're so into branding. I love it. Yeah. And then they, so they kind of moved out a little bit, yeah. but it's still the Cholo look. Yeah. But only they can pull it off. Cause then if you have a young cat, maybe 23, try to pull off like, like the higher ends of Cholology, you're like, oh, you're just a pussy, you know? Cause you didn't really earn it. Yeah. You got to have like the, the stripes to be like, oh shit. Okay. I see. I see where you're at. Yeah, that's tapes. one thing I really appreciated. At least I don't know what the cholos look like or dress like now, um, but that's one thing I really appreciated about the ones that I did see, which were in the '90s and the '80s and um, and '80s because obviously I was looking at like old movies that had it. Um, is that their their uniform, if you will, was always on point? Like like I was saying, like brand new looking and always clean shoes. Like you don't want to scuff those. Or else you just you're dirty, you know. Um, the socks they're either white, 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 or black, 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 black. No variation, no pattern, none of that shit. And then like their pants, like you said, had to have like the crease down the middle. Um, and then like even like the the what is it the muscle the muscle tees like that was always like fucking white as fuck. Like everything was like ironed and pressed and like it looked really neat. And like their facial hair was always like really nice. They smelled good. Trolls are very presentable. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Well, where are we at with that now? How is it? Like, what are they mean? maintaining the, the code? I the haven't seen code? that many cholos. So I don't know if the style changed. The only cholos I see are the ones that are older. Yeah. And then um, those guys, they still keep keep with it, you know. But like I, I saw, I was rolling through uh, Monterey Park and I think I saw what was new age Asian thugs. Oh, and what's it's a little that? bit different. What is that? So are the color, the side? colors are a little bit the same. The shirts are still baggy. What are the colors? Wait, I don't know the Asian. Still, still like, I mean, it's very cholo inspired. Okay, so browns, blacks, blues, you know, like, like grays. No reds, probably. Yeah, and uh, so it, I saw this guy with like a big black crew neck, with um, like black skinny jeans though. Okay. And then he had like plugs in his ears. So I'm like, okay, I can see like the modern adaptation of like. I got you. Thug wear. Yeah, I feel like that was kind of around too, like um, in the, like the early, twenty tens. No. Um. Nah. And I felt like that was very specific to like the Asian people. Plugs in their ears. Yeah. No. Yeah, but not thugs. Oh. Because Asian thugs dress like cholos too. Okay. You know, so like the the plugs in the ears, I'm like, that's a uh, if you're a thug, you don't have that. I see. Yeah, they'll call you lots of names for stuff like that. I see. Yeah. I see. Um, do you ever look back? Yeah. And go, man, when I was when I was uh, a teenager, those were like, because I'm thinking like I'm trying to equate like you being, um, like a bad boy with like being gangster, and then it made me think of you being in high school and go like, man, I miss like my teenager time days, like just in how what way? I don't know, like in any way, like whether that be like partying or just school life or like any of that no i never liked it that whole era not really it wasn't me what do you mean like like uh you know everyone came home at 4 a.m or 6 a.m right and then so like we would all party and whatever and i'd come home at 4 or 6 a.m what do you mean by everyone like all your friends everyone i knew that was cool god damn so like, we all come home at 6 a.m it was definitely not you cool. weren't cool yeah and then uh we would like come home at 6 a.m and then my sleep would be all interrupted and I would wake up at like 11. I'm like, why do people like doing this? I'm like, but I guess we all have to. So it just never fit me, you know, or like um, we go raving and then we're not home for three days. And then like you're sleeping at random people's houses. And I'm like, I haven't even showered, man. I'm like, it's kind of nasty. I'm like, why do people like doing this? So like that whole period, I think I was just doing things that everyone else was doing because that's what you do and if i went to sleep at nine or ten the way i wanted to people will think i'm weird because half of my friends woke up at 10 p.m yeah and so it was just like it never fit who i really was gotcha yeah yeah um did you grow up with that much structure i don't know i just think in my heart i'm a grandpa like, oh. since day one okay like since day one, I just you're like, like Benjamin Button. Yeah, like I I knew if I slept at ten, sleep was so good. If I slept at two p.m., no good. But I stayed up all the time, played Tetranet, 
I don't know, talking to people on AIM. I get it. FOMO, man. Yeah. Everyone else, I mean, what else are you going to do? Because everyone, all but, your friends are going to be sleeping. But I don't feel good. Yeah. You know, the next day, I'm like, oh, I didn't feel that good. I didn't, like, wasn't very refreshed. And you did that for four years. About way longer, probably since junior high. Damn. that's You were going coming home at four in the morning in junior high? Oh, that's like 2 a.m. Oh, my God. Well, I would like sneak out, you know? Yeah. You sneak out. You climb out the window. Do did, the good old sneak attack. Yeah, I lived in a two-story, and I was fucking in the hood. I, I would have found that you were fucking afraid. in the hood? No. I know. I put in the wrong fucking word, all right? But I was in the hood, and I was, like, really scared of it. So that, there's no way I'm leaving at night. Did I ever tell you I jumped out of my girlfriend's second-story window? Yes. You have. That shit was crazy. Where did this come from? Oh, because you went back to No, no, because you're telling me you lived on the second story. I'm like, oh. hey, I've been in the second story too. If you want to go out, you well, go out. ours is different because we have like bars on our windows. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that was not fun. Every time I jumped out and landed, I lost a couple brain cells. Every time? How many Every times time. did you do it? Probably less than 10. But because there's time because her dad worked graveyard. So like she, he would come home. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I have to go like through the bathroom window and I climb Wait, out. Wait, wouldn't he come home at the same time? What do you mean? Because if he worked graveyard, yeah. wouldn't he come home at the same time because he's leaving the Yeah, but place? I didn't time it right. Oh, I was going to leave see. at 1, or, but he came at 12, or I was going to leave at 2 or something. You know, it gotcha. comes from different times. Oh, different and times. And so, like, I, yeah, I, I'm like, oh, fuck. So I jump out, and then when I the land, it, like, there's so much impact. And then, like, sometimes I would just be squatting there, like, on the floor, like, oh, fuck, that was crazy. Like, almost, maybe I had a Isn't concussion. Isn't that nuts? That's what fucking hormones do? Makes you do dumb shit, yeah. <laughs> your fucking dick had so much power that it was like yo brain i'm about to get this shit you're about to lose a few of your of, brain of your cells. homies yeah and it's like the brain's like all right fuck it let's do it i know good luck jumping out of the second story here taika yeah you little shit because you ain't going nowhere your legs knee, knee cast and pop in backwards yeah i'm gonna put bars all over these fucking windows dude <sighs> oh my god you running for, for all these honeys he's about to bring home Dude, people will like uh, will DM me stuff like that. Like, yeah. oh, he's gonna be such a heartbreaker because you've said that, and I'm like, of course you're gonna think that. Uh, I never said he's gonna be a heartbreaker. Oh, really? All Who of our that? all of our friends think he's gonna be yeah, a heartbreaker. Yeah. Okay, then never mind. Um, where I'm like, no, that means a lot of these bitches are gonna try to get at my little cuny guy. Honestly, I don't even <laughs> think like that. Real talk, honestly. Yeah, what do you think? I don't like? even think bitches. I'm just like, I really do hope he picks a good partner. Like, that's all I ever really think about. Yeah. And then, like, um, yeah, I kind of leave it at that. And then I kind of look forward to the idea of, like, expanding the family in that way. You know? And then kind of seeing how, oh, I was about to see, uh, seeing how, like, how, like, our dynamic is going to become. Like, I think of that shit. I don't think of this. Oh, they're gonna take away my baby. I always feel like, oh shit, I'm I'm gonna add on oh, more family. Scary. Yeah. Why? What about you? What about me? Do you think about like all the honeys he's gonna get? No. I I know it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna get hand jobs in the movie theater. <laughs> oh my god. I know I just know it's gonna happen, but it's like Same It's dude. all it's all age appropriate, you know? Yeah. I just hope that like when he's doing it, he's doing it like the good way. Where it's like, you know, I think because I was such a uh, bad kid, I'm like, I'm not coming home for like weeks at a time. The good way. How do you do it? How do you get a hand job in the fucking theater and to make it be the good way? I want him to live like. You want him to like pitch get it perfect from perfect his... life. Um, what does that Not the boys mean? in the hood life. You know, I think I feel like we all live movies, right? So you feel like you grew up too fast is what you're saying? Um, not too fast, just different. Like, I feel like I have a, uh, like, if I, my teenage movie, if someone shot it accurately, has to be rated R, right? So, I think if you grew up the right way, it's probably PG, PG-13. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, so, I just hope that he lives the life where it's, like, pitch perfect. Where the the biggest trouble he was worried about is... um Getting kicked off the choir. If his new like vocals were gonna be accepted by his vocal group, you that's, know what I mean. That's key. Not yeah. his homie getting blasted and like yeah, cops getting slamming him across on the hood of the car. Yeah. 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 So, so I think like people. I feel live, like that's growing up too fast. Well, yeah. Some people don't even experience that. Yeah, I, I just yeah. think people live different. Like, you never thought of it like that. I'm like, oh, your movie's different from my movie. Um, not in movie. I think everyone terms. is a walking movie. Yeah, yeah, but not in movie terms, but yeah, same concept. Yeah. Like, I'm like, your movie is different from my movie. My movie is directed by this person. Your movie is directed by that person. 
it's even rated a different score mine's mm-hmm. this yours that and i can see like when i look at people i just look at different movies and because of that sometimes i'm like oh you two it's gonna be hard for you guys to understand each other because you're like completely different movies uh we have completely different movies yeah do you think we don't understand each other well the director could be similar oh right who's the director to you like uh like han zimmer right like he did uh inception soundtrack yeah Bang, right and I think he also did Lion King, the first one. So you're talking about the musician, the music then? I'm talking about like a movie. The whole, the the whole, whole vibe? cast and crew. Cast and crew and vibe and feeling. That's what I'm talking about. Interesting. I don't think we have the same director at all. Maybe we share some cast and crew. That's so cute that you have these terms. All right, I'm going <laughs> to stop you right there real quick. Uh, and we're going to introduce our sponsor. What up, guys? This episode is brought to you by Best Fiends. You guys ever catch yourself at the airport just chilling and you're like, man, what else is there to do? I've already been on all my social media platforms. I don't know what to do. I just have my phone. Is there something I can do to have fun? Or you catch yourself at the end of the day and you're like, I just want to do something that's kind of brainless, but still fun and a little bit engaging. Well, that's what I love about Best Fiends. It's a game that's on your phone and it's a five star rated puzzle games and you can download it free. And it's so fun because it's super colorful. It's vibrant. Every single level changes and you're playing this cute little bug and you're trying to get rid of all the bad bugs that are destroying the garden and so that's why i love it and it's it's very brainless you could pop it out you don't even need to have internet you could play it on the plane it's freaking awesome you can download the five star rated puzzle game today it's best fiends that's friends without the r f-i-e-n-d-s free today on the app store or google play that's best fiends friends without the r b-e-s-t-f-i-e-n-d-s and we're back um, I think it's super cuny that you see everyone as like, oh, you guys share the same cast and crew or whatever. That's fucking really positive. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't even see it as like. Or sometimes they don't share the same cast and crew, though. No, I mean, the way you categorize it as movies. Yeah. Yeah. Because I almost see everyone as a different brand. And everyone and every brand has its own story and movie. And like a certain, you know what I mean? Like when you think of like. Okay, you're Nike. I know yeah. exactly which director, right? And if you're like, oh, okay, I see you. You're a Disney person. I see what, like, you are you got a John Williams soundtrack. Like, I can see, like... Nice flexes right there. Really? I like that. Like, I John just, Williams is who? He, he did all, like, the Steven Spielberg, like, all the feel-good movies. Oh. Like... Dun, 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 is that? No, no, that's not him. I don't know. But, like, that kind of, like, okay, I, horror, I did Jurassic horror. Park, like, that kind of, like... Got it. Like dun, the, dun, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff, like orchestral, and it just, it just makes you like that. <laughs> I don't know if that was a dinosaur or me crying, but yeah. that's, a, that, that's what it feels like. <laughs> that's cutie. Um, yeah, I don't think I look at people like that. I, I just see it as like, oh shit, like what's your story? Like I see it as stories. Yeah, movies are stories. Yeah, but I think yours is like cast and crew or whatever. I'm just like, I want to read your book. Oh, I see the whole production. What do you mean? Like sometimes I see like a person just walking and it's like boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, oh shit, this guy got swag. You know? You can't, yeah. And sometimes you see someone walking and it's like. Dun, 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 so wait, so you see their soundtrack. That's what a movie is. It's everything, right? You got audio, soundtrack, cast and crew. It's the whole thing. It's Dude, you're meant to too. like make a movie. It's like a whole production. <laughs> I just see everything. I see like everything. You know, like so if you see someone walking and they grab a scarf from this side and they throw it to that side, it's like mm, 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 a mm, scarf. Mm, 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 what do you mean? Mm, they mm, Explain mm, that. They get a scarf and they throw it from one side to the other side. Yeah. Like, you ever see those Why chicks are that are bald scarf? and they have big aviators and have a scarf mm, 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 that mm, are bald? Yeah. Wait, are you fucking with me? No. What are you talking about? High fashion models. That are bald? Yeah, there's a lot of high fashion bald chicks. Okay, and then they grab a scarf from one end to the other? No, they grab it and they throw it across their neck and it goes in, and it drapes over the shoulder. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not a scarf. Gotcha. It is a scarf. It's already hanging on the neck. This one's going down. They grab it, they throw it, and it goes all the way over back that way. <laughs> okay, fine. That's cutie. Uh, so you'll see stuff like that. And then the, and the music it. starts go, playing. Oh, okay, I see what your brand is. I see what you're about. I see who would make your movie. Yeah. And the more I get to know them, then it fills in the cast and crew more. 
I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I thought it was going to be directed by this person. This person going to direct it. Oh, no, I did the, that person's. A, I'm like, oh, you're a, you got a really cheap producer. I could tell. You're, your tastes are no good. You got a really bad amateur producer. Have you ever met anyone with a scary movie? Oh, shit. Dee, 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 no, because those dee, are usually dee, dee, psychopaths. Dee, dee. I think I don't think I met anyone. Yeah, that, I mean I don't know who you've met. The I don't hell? Think I, no, no, I don't think I met anybody. This with is a, the most I learned from you on these podcasts. No, 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 no. I don't think I met anyone with a scary movie before. Um, like like horror, right? Like some like horror psychological thriller. Like yeah, that. yeah, no, yeah. No, no, shit no, no, like no, that. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You're like I'm hoping I never do. Yeah. Have I? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But who's the weirdest person you think you've met? The weirdest? Like in that realm. So the thing is, because I'm weird, I don't see them that weird. Okay, anyone that's made your skin crawl? Where you're like, Ooh. Okay, so traditionally weird? Fuck, I can't even believe. Traditionally that he- weird? Probably Joe or Bobby Lee. Um, In a creepy way. I'm trying to go on the scary movie oh, horror. Okay, okay. But thriller. I'm just saying, so I'll, I'll go to that. But okay, so Joe Bobby happy, Lee, Joe and Bobby, like... like uh, in a traditionally weird way, but I actually think other people are weird for thinking that. I think Pitch Perfect is weird. That's also another form of weird. Because I'm like, who Those the are fuck, two different types of who weird. Who the fuck just busts into a musical, you know? And then everything is like this clean and like, like... Wait, are you talking about a movie or real life? The movie. Yeah, well, I mean, because it's a movie, it makes sense. Yeah, but if that movie about this person, if your real troubles yeah, are really musical? just singing, who's like, a musical? Like some people, type like of person? some people, like uh, they they flip the fuck out over little things. And that's, oh, that's a musical. You know what I mean? Like if that's your a plot, comedy. if your plot conflict are th- is this, it's like oh my god, they're not gonna accept me because gotcha. because I make music with cups. <laughs> you know? Then yeah, I'm yeah. like, damn, that's, that's funny. That's you know, a that's, musical to you. I'm like, that's a. Uh, that's crazy. Okay, so you were talking about Bobby Lee and uh, Joe? Yeah, so I think they're they're weird to normal people, but I think they're actually normal to me because they're just themselves. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, so that's, like that's, that's cool, you know? That's cool that they're themselves. Like, they're probably like, a, probably got to get like a Wes Anderson or something to direct stuff, make it look vibrant and crazy and like a little quirky, you know? Yeah. Tim Burton or something. Mm, like has more dimension. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, well, I meant in a creepy way. No, nah, not that much. I okay. think I just go away so I don't meet you don't, with all these people. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I haven't I haven't either. Yeah. Yeah, some people I meet, I'm like, your director doesn't even know how to speak English. Like what? I don't know. Just like, like some it's people, all fucked up? Like yeah, the room? Like, like you're, like Who you, directed like the you room? A, like you, have a, you have a bad script. Your script's bad. Is there anything ever wrong with these people? No. It's just them. I'm just like, your script don't make sense. You don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get you. Um, so you've met- You don't think about people like that? Not in not in movies, no. I don't think about cast or anything like that. I look at them and I'm like- What are you thinking, vegetables? <laughs> no, I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking in books, I guess. Mainly books. Books that they're writing. So you think most people are like books? Like yearbooks kind of too. Because oh, as, they, okay. as they'll explain their stories or whatever, then I'm like, oh, okay, I could see it. And then I start like- like if they go, oh yeah, you know, not like junior high, I played volleyball and I was on the team and I got whatever. Then I start like that picture gets more and more exposed. Oh, I see. So like it's pictures, like a yearbook. Yeah. Yeah, but it's I mean they're all stories. Yeah. Stories is is movies, pictures, plays. And I never scripts, um books. I don't ever. I don't know if you see it this way, but like I, I it's hard for me to like put people in like their categories where I go like, oh, you're a type of, you're like this type. What do you mean? Like saying like, if we had to use your reference of movies, yeah, um, going like, oh, your story is more of like a rom-com or whatever. Here, I'm putting you here with all the other rom-com people. Oh, I always do that. Yeah, I'm saying I, I don't do that. You don't do that? What? How come you don't do that? Because I feel like there's so many differences. You know, like one little minor detail changes them completely. No, to me, it's uh, that's true, but I have to find that out first because genres have genre rules. So you're just talking about, re- so you actually judge a book by its cover. I judge, uh, I judge a book by its rules. Rules. Say yeah. rules again? Rules. Okay. So for example, every genre has its rules, right? 
in action, every argument is going to end Sex. in in a highly oh. <laughs> highly choreographed oh, action, shootouts. right? Windshield's going to break. Car crashes. Car crashes. Those are the rules of Someone's this Someone's back is going into yeah. the car for sure. Like, I don't know why, but the school principal can do a 360 backflip. That's <laughs> that's that's the rules of this Everyone genre. knows how to use a gun in this Yeah, place. everyone knows how, right? And uh, in the rules of rom-com, no one is pulling out a gun to solve any type of conflict. Yeah, that's not common that's at That's not part of it. Or right? wrong. Yeah. And um, and in the rules of horror, if something crazy happens, white people got to figure out what the hell's going on. All the time. Every single time. So like, did you hear that yeah, upstairs? Every genre has its rules. Let's right? go check it out. Yeah. Did you notice that? That every genre has its rules? Absolutely. So that's why when you have genre bending things and if it bends too much, like in rom-com, if two people like like two of the ex boyfriends meet and they go into a straight up like Shaolin kung fu competition, you're like, wait, what the fuck? This is weird. It doesn't make any sense. And oh, it, yeah, 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 because you said calm, right? Because it could be a romance. Or though. if you're watching Rocky, and at the end he starts singing, yeah, that's weird. You're like, uh, this isn't a musical. Yeah, this is very weird, right? Yeah. So different genres have its different rules, mm -hmm. and because of that. When I place people in their genres, it's because I already pretty much know what they're capable of doing. Damn, you came up with that so fucking fast to explain that. Yeah. You're like, I judge them by their rules. Because that's how I know. And I think that's why I'm good at mafia. Or because I'm good at reading mafia. Because I know what people are capable of. Damn, you're good. Like, Teach like, me your like, fucking like even with ways, the, like with dude. With our, with our friends, right? Like, like some people, if you push them to the back, they'll never pull out a gun. They'll never, it's never in real life. They're never going to go to that. That's depth. good. I don't think I could predict people. Like or some people, you know, like people's behavior like, like that. Some people, are, are you like an eyeball pusher? You know, if someone pushes you to the limits, would you just, you yourself jump out of the building or would you face the villain and push the eyeballs as the back of the brain? You know, like some people, they, they, they look at blood, they get queasy. You know, I could like, I look uh, at people okay. and I kind of know like their capabilities. And because, and so once you know the choices of a protagonist, you kind of know what movie you're in. Gotcha. What what if you kind of know what the main character's choices are? Yeah. You're like, okay, I, I see get it. what you're. I, I see, see what you're gonna do. I see. I see. Okay, then I guess I do put them in categories because then, like, yeah, you can see someone that's timid, and you can kind of already see their pattern, and you're like, oh, okay, I I got I get to see how I probably can predict how your love life is gonna go, yeah. or like finding a mate, or. Yeah. In a case of an emergency yeah. or public speaking even. Yeah, like Jonah Hill is more likely to fall on someone and knock them out than to knock them out with his bare hands. What do you mean? Jonah Hill, like in 21 Jump Street. Uh. Like that character. Uh. You know? Gotcha. So in real life, everyone has just different choices and different possibilities. Yeah. And then so uh, when I meet people, I kind of understand their movie and I understand their genre. And, then that, and that helps me get a read on people and it also helps me plug better. I'm like, oh, you like, you like, what do you, mean by plug? you like Dua Lipa. Oh, uh, from our, our last podcast. Sorry. But like when I try to connect with people. Yeah, that's the plug like, I'm like, Oh, about. you like this. Not saying that one genre is better than the other, but then it helps me explore the genre because I already know, what, bit quicker, I know yeah. what genre, you know, because yeah. if I'm brainstorming with like a Tarantino guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. You should chop their arms off. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they're not, they're going to take it as. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then if they I'm would talking. read it the right way. Yeah, but if I'm talking with like a pitch perfect person, they're like, what do you mean chop their arms off in this movie? Yeah, you're not playing by the rules. Yeah, like, th 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 I don't think Anna Kendrick would like that. I'm like, that's true. Let's uh, harmonize some more. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that changed for you once you started um, really trying to write your own movie? Because now you had to look at people in that way because there's rules, like you said, that everyone lives by in order to make them who they are. My actual movie or my medical metaphorical movie for myself and my life? I guess I'm trying to get to the bottom of when this movie stuff, like you viewing people as movies, when that started. Um, I think in high school, junior high. Interesting, but you didn't even watch movies. I didn't, but I, I knew that we were all writers of our own movie though. That's when I first had that thought. Because I feel like you're approaching it in such a complex way. Um, at, when you didn't even understand how movies really worked. So I don't know the technical terms, but I had feelings. 
Mm. You know, like when I was in you high smart school, motherfucker. like when I was in high school, like I can, you can feel it, right? It's like, you know, when people say like their gut, like, oh, my gut tells me this. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it feels like this, right? So like I can feel Fast and the Furious movie. Another movie comes up and, and I'm like, and then it's like the same type of talk and demeanor and like the flashy car type B-roll. And like, oh, this is a Fast and Furious type movie. Gotcha. I can have a whole category of that, like biker boys, like that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, this is like, they all feel Man, you like know this. a lot of those. Yeah, they all feel like that or they all feel like this. So that's that's when I was like, that's when I first had the feeling of like, oh man, we're all writing our own movie and uh, we can make our own choices and we can write the endings to our movies. It's It just depends on if we want to sit in the director's or writer's chair of our movie or if we want to sit in the actor's chair of our movie. And I think most people they think it's being written by someone else. So they're just not really making their own decisions and they're sitting more in the actor's chair. But I realized that like you can actually write your own movie. And I think that's what made me join like the Marine Corps. I'm like, what, what, would, make, what would make this movie very interesting? I have a guy that's a delinquent, fucked up his whole life. How am I gonna get him from here to a point of where I think success needs to be? I'm like, this guy I think needs to go to the, the Marine Corps and go to boot camp. Yeah, that's such a profound thought to have and and perspective at such a young age. I don't think, I mean, did you even understand that it was like that? Like you're, you're like writing your own movie? Yeah, that's, that's when I first had the thought. Oh, shit. I'm like, oh, shit, we're all writers of our own movie. And I'm like, why am I writing this so shittily? Like if I'm writing this movie, if I'm writing this main character, why is this main character waking up at 11 a.m.? I'm like this guy that like like you know if you're making a list of characters, badass mofo. This guy like you know he tears the handles off doors and shit. And you're writing this guy, and if you just write a description of who I was in high school and I'm write it out, I'm like, damn, wakes up at like 3 p.m. That's such a creative way to eats, look at it. Eats instant noodles every day. Um, that eats sounds one like a good life. Eats one meal a day. Smokes no. a ton of weed with his friends. Oh, ditches school. I'm like, um, that's a loser. That's definitely in the loser character category, not in like the leading man category. I'm like, yeah. okay, so there's something wrong about this character. How do I change this character to this character? I'm like, okay, now that's the movie I need to focus on. So what's the transformation, you know? Damn, that's hella tight. So I was then I think because of that, I was able to make like more choices. And like, even that's how I think about it now too. Even like with like, um, you know, wanting to take jujitsu and stuff like that. It's just, I think about, Okay, cool. This is the, if I write down Bart as the character now. Okay, cool. I'll write that down. What kind of character type is that? Who would be casted as that? Is this like a, 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 a what's that guy's name? Bruce Willis type character? Or is this a Joseph Gordon-Levitt type character? Like, you know, I always feel like there's a, there's very like specific branding and you can kind of get the what feeling of it. What character do you want to be right now? I don't know yet, but then I'm like, oh. I want, I know who I want to, to get it to. So I'm like. What, like the I'm rock? Like, I'm like, so what else do I need to get it so that the right people play who I think it should be. Yeah. Like would if we had to put that a name to so to that, would it be like The Rock? Maybe like Jamie Foxx? Oh. I feel like I don't know much about his personal life. Yeah. Maybe a, a Jamie Foxx type or a, um a Charlie Hunnam type. Charlie the lead of uh Sons of Anarchy. Jack's yeah, Teller. Yeah, yeah. Um oh in the movie. Okay. Like the type of show. roles they play. I see. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm like all trying to process that. Yeah, like complex beings that trying to want that want to do the right thing and are doing whatever it takes to do the right thing. Like that. Nice. I yeah, that's just such a creative way to look at people. Um I'm trying but that's to that's really what we all are, you know? We're all just characters in one big movie. But we're like a saga where it's like Game of Thrones where we can go into your person's world and have your like three or four seasons and episodes and go into this person. But we're all in one movie that's just playing. Yeah. You know? So even like when I go like pandemic, the movie, right? Like we have one general narrative of the world. But then you can see like like what, you know, like my mom takes off. She was in Taiwan. I'm going to stay there. It's safe, you know? Or then there's people that like I, I gotta I gotta get back to work I gotta do this or I gotta do this you know and everyone has offshoots of pandemic the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah damn that's a really fun way to look at it 
Um, and I actually think it's a good way to look at it because it makes you double examine your choices. Because in, in movies, all the actors are, or all, all the characters are, they're determined by their choices. You know, when like, when like Spider-Man or whatever, when they back is against the wall, do they come back again? Try to re-defeat the villain, even though half of his costume is burned off and you can see his sexy chiseled abs. You're like, wow, you were staring at that part a little too long, dude. Yeah, you're like, is that tells you a lot about the character. You know, the character is determined by the choices that they make. And as a writer, you know that. So if you want to, like they always say, like, show, don't tell, right? So it's more important to show what the character is doing, not the character. I'm so righteous and heroic. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is see the guy, you know, they always have the scene where the big semi truck's about to come and they fly and they grab it out. And like, that guy's heroic. He's willing to risk it all for it, for the right thing. Yeah. 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 No, I think that the reason why I think it was profound for you to put it that way is because you were able to um, set goals in creating the life that you were already imagining that you wanted, you know, where a lot of people, um, at least in that phase, I didn't really think beyond, you know, leaving my parents' house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just got like, all I want to focus on is getting to this one level, whereas I felt like you were thinking like 10 levels ahead at that age. I don't know if I was thinking 10 levels ahead. I think I was just thinking about it in a movie. So if what you, do you mean? If, so if you're thinking about it in a movie, you're like, this is a, in the, the movie has a beginning and an end. Yeah, but your production is a one location production. And then so I think for you, your movie was just, okay, this person, it's a girl in a house. Right? That's what, that's what your movie is. And um, you never, and you're just like, how can I get this girl out of the house? That's your movie. Yeah. Oh, so you would, so there's like different movies that these characters are in? No, it's just different phase. Like we all live different movies, right? Yeah. And even different periods of our, of our lives are different movies. But for you, uh, I don't think I was thinking more complex. I think I was definitely thinking more metaphorical. But um, I think you, if you were to think of, it in a movie format maybe you could have zoomed out a little bit more too or made choices earlier yeah or bolder right because i don't and i think that's, that's what i thought you were doing yeah and i think a lot of people don't make bolder choices is because they don't understand that they're writing their own movie yeah because i think like joining the um joining the marines is huge because it's like life-changing you're leaving home for like it's like such an extreme and no bold. one in my family was military so i wasn't even inspired by anyone that's, yeah that's what i mean and that's why i feel like that's why it was profound to me at least because it's like you were able to see the tra trajectory of your life and then going oh shit in this movie these are like the laws of this type of character and i'm like hitting every single one aka the loser um and you were like, okay, some big shit needs to change because I need to erase this whole thing immediately. It wasn't like, let's just take one thing off at a time. It was like, boom, huge, life-changing, three months away, hardest fucking time of your life, leaving your whole family, you know? Yeah. Like, that's huge. I don't think I would have made a big, bold change like that. I think my biggest bold was going, or my biggest uh, change was going, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to finally get you know, get a job and so that I can get my car. Like it was like little baby steps so that I can just get out, you know, but it was still very comfortable baby steps. Like it wasn't like, I'm just running away and gonna make it on my own, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's and, on and my, I think your that's shit's how, fucking. I think that's how we also have different directors. Who directed Forrest Gump? Maybe uh, that's what directed mine. He has big plot points. You know, ran from running off the football field mm, to joining the military, to running, to running across the nation. Yeah, what's mine? Yours? I don't know. Because like, you know, different directors, they focus on different things. Some have big plot points, like Steven Spielberg for sure. Um, yours, if it might be more on like the quirks and the, the intimacies and stuff. Might be like a fucking Kevin Smith movie or something. Could be. Yeah, could be like that. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like more about the smaller details of things, you know, where it's not big, like building falling down. Yeah. You know? Because he had one movie called The Clerks that yeah. just took place. The whole thing took place in like minimum, like less than five locations, mainly at a liquor store. <laughs> maybe that's you. <laughs> that's your movie. No, I think that's great. Yeah, maybe that's your movie. Dang. That's tight. Well, I think it's, 
like it's just a lot to um to like think of at that age and i think like even till this day some people don't know that like they don't know that they can write their own book yeah or, or movie you know it's like you literally can control all of that it's a tough pill to swallow to know that oh shit i'm the writer and director and technically the producer like you're literally your whole movie staff you know yeah like whether you have a lambo in your movie or whether you have jennifer aniston in your movie or you have a no-name actor in your movie or you don't have a lambo it's it's all up to you not that there's right or wrong but you have full control of your movie and it's like cast crew location wardrobe equipment that's all your choice yeah and then plot points the writer it's all you like what do you want to do do you want to sign up for a marathon tomorrow or do you want to learn violin tomorrow or you know like all those things it's like what do you want to do literally tomorrow like on the next page when you turn the page what does this character do it's up to you you write it it's just is this character you know like one of the things i was really ashamed about because i did a lot is uh, i used to jack off in the bathroom like crazy in junior high and i used to hit hide all of my like uh nudie mags like underneath the sink and then there's times i'm fucking like jacking off in there and then my director guy comes out i'm like okay so like <laughs> interior bathroom bart jacks off again you know <laughs> interior bathroom bart jacks off again i'm like maybe they printed that page way too many times I'm like, on this accident. fucking script has bart jacking off fucking like 20 pages out of this whole script i'm like i need to fucking be more productive about bart kwan jacking off they're, they're, every other scene is bart kwan jacking off i don't think that stopped until uh the director kind of got lazy there huh yeah it took a long time <laughs> but yeah for a period of my life there's a lot of masturbation <laughs> going on and then i'll but then like every time that i, I think would, you had I would a come, porn director i would there. To come face to face with it you know like i think because you can't of talk the, about jacking off and then use the word come face like oh, that's fine. just too well fast. i was trying to like face my movie like i you know after you write your movie like the cool thing about being a and writer then at 37 you said i'm finally no more, gonna yeah, stop yeah. So like you Stop can you this. can the cool thing about being the writer of the movie you can write the future yeah but you also get to edit the past you know you get to look at it read it over and over again oh, that's a bad script and you can base the future off the past oh i see i right? see, I you see. Can go, that, okay. that type of editing you're not like going past God, yes it. yeah yeah and then go okay so i uh so the reason why this movie probably didn't sell is there's too many scenes of masturbation yeah Nobody um, wants to buy porno. Yeah, let's take that out. They're free Cause, now. Because Saving Private Ryan would have been way different if all the soldiers were jacking off every other page. You would kind of yeah. lose the heartfeltness of it. You would lose the camaraderie yeah, of it. Yeah, it's like Saving Privates. Saving Privates, Privates. privates, privates. Yeah. Like yeah. you you would lose the cinematic feeling yeah, of I'm it. Yeah, I'm definitely not crying. Yeah. There's and no cum that I could ever look at that I'm like going to shed a tear for. Yeah, and that's probably why like most movies, they just take that part out. Yeah. Because it's not very... It's not necessary. It's not cinematic to it, you know? Yeah. So knowing that, I'm like, okay, let's... Uh, so I, sometimes I do compare my movie to the movie of like that you actually watch. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that you put it like that. Um, I think that's a good place to end it. And I think that's a really cool question to have as like a takeaway for everybody. It's like, what does your movie look like? Who's directing it right now? What genre is it? That's really tight. Um, I hate that I'm going to ask this, but is there anything no. else? God damn it that you would like to say. On that note, <laughs> I would like to thank it. you for listening. I know I, I have to. Um, and I would like to thank our sponsors. Shout out to our sponsor, Best Fiends. Download the five-star rated puzzle game today. Best Fiends for free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. And shout outs to our own brand, Barbell Brigade. Go to barbellbrigade.com for our brand new mango guava pre-workout. It's super refreshing, super delicious. My especially fave. with ice cold water right before you train. Get right before you train. Go to barbellbrigade.com. Also, shout outs to Jumbi for ceremonial grade matcha at affordable price. Go to jumbishop.com and use the code BELL, B-E-A-W to get 10% off everything.